Okay, so I'll try something different today. Cause it's still light out, and uh, I think it might be better if I record the class and then um, <clears throat> uh, just play it later. Okay, cause I still got some light out. Okay, and I'm kind of like up for, for doing a little work here. Okay, so. straight my staff out. Class had to be good. Now, all right. All right. everything's good. You do it three times in a row. So, this week, Got something new going on, uh, and that is my buddy, my good friend, uh, my good friend Ray, gave me some information on uh, breathology, yeah. which was a very scientific study okay, on breathing, oxygen carbon dioxide and so on. And uh, it's almost a little bit in contrast, okay, right? So remember, stretch up to the top of the pole, sit down and stretch. So it's almost in, in contrast, I think, to um, the Wim Hof method. Um, <clears throat> but it's very interesting and um, um, gathering some more information really on breathing methods. Okay? Uh, the one thing that kind of struck me uh, really well was that uh, uh, the author of the book says that um, uh, people who practice Tai Chi seem to have the breathing techniques down pretty well. So we're going to talk a bit about breathing today and different types of breathing that um, I've experienced um, and that uh, I can talk about. Good stretch of the shoulder. Good. All right, stance, turn it. All right. Stretch a little bit. Inhale. Breath. So the breath, definitely Tai Chi like. Breathe in to the to the belly. One of the things that I kind of picked up from my yoga studies, you know, I studied yoga with Nora Anderson in Maybe next week we'll work on, on a stance. Okay, so inhale. Exhale. Hands help in. Out. In. And out. Good. So with Tai Chi, um, one of the reasons for doing it slow is that we get that really deep low inhale, uh, and at the same time, um, we can prolong the breath uh, over a period of time. And it seems that this prolonging of breath um, has an impact on the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the body and then letting go of it. Okay, so without going uh, too much into the science of it, uh, which I can follow because I was a uh, exercise physiologist in my undergraduate study. 
All right, so stance open up. Okay, good. Hey. So you want to pick the cycles. From the depth, from the lact here, inhale. To about this point, now this is it, the outflow. By the time I fully finished out, okay, I start my head. Keeping with our principles of Tai Chi, right? When one part moves, all parts move. My ankle's moving. My knees are moving. My hips are moving. My right shoulders moving, my right elbow, my right wrist. Okay. So always going through the Chan Su Chin, right? We're always rotating, okay? My leg is rotating, right? Both my legs, okay? Hips are rotating, right? Okay. Nine times. to feel that flow from the navel to the arm to the palm. Seven. Very simple exercise. Eight. And I can talk on the exhale because I'm letting the breath out the very slow kind of exhale. Nine. are alternating, rising and falling. Number seven.
in and out. Inhale. Exhale. Remember this is the balancer. This is the closer. The opener. Two brush. The closer. Every school, Qigong, uh, martial arts, all have their openers and closers. Right? And very ritualistic kind of thing. All right, so here's our wax on. Okay? Now comes our wax on. Okay, so, pull it up. It depends how you want to envision this cycle. Okay? I kind of like this bottom half, the storehouse here, and this part, the delivery to there. Okay? So I'm making that cycle. This Mason Dixon store. So movement with your breath in slow fashion. And it takes the boredom out of just practicing breathing. That's it, you want to feel that pressure build up in the abdomen, up into the shoulder, then to the palm. Two more. You don't always have to be in a big stance, I could do it here. It's just that with the deep stance helps to get the leg muscles involved. Three. And if you feel like a pitcher about to throw a ball, it's a very, very similar move. Number six. Nine, we'll go right into the crossover. That's one. That's two. I'm taking a breath on each one. So here, inhale, here. Exhale, look, here, here. Exhale. 
everything you need in order to have the Tai Chi experience regular. We're moving circular, relaxed, consistent. One part moves all parts. Concentration. Chi flow. Breath is soft. Like you shouldn't hear it. In and out. I might be a little obvious with it. Okay. But one thing I notice uh, with um, fighters, okay, you'll never hear a fighter breathing okay, because they know that's their weakness, especially as a fighter, you're looking for somebody uh, kind of panting, right? Why? Because when they're on the exhale, the body armor is weak. Okay? If you hit somebody on the exhale, okay, you're always going to disable. The other thing is, is that we are more stable on the exhale. Okay? We're less stable on the inhale. If you want to jump up, okay, don't exhale okay, to jump up. Inhale. And so uh, it does have an effect on your stability and mobility. Okay? Um, uh, but the one thing that you always do, okay, a good trained fighter, you'll never hear them gasping for air. They might be able, eventually go over here and go, sucking some air, but you don't want to be uh, in this kind of situation because um, you, it'll make you vulnerable. Okay? Uh, so you you can always tell a uh, experienced uh, person that's had a lot of time in the ring. Okay. Um, on the mat or whatever, uh, but a way they control the breath. Okay, jujitsu very, very important. You can control your breath because you have to kind of keep your body muscular up so you don't get your internal organ all kind of squashed up. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, so, okay, waxing on and waxing off. Very, very important uh, moves that we do. All right. So we um, we talked about commencement. Okay. We talked about brush knee and twist step. So let's practice brush knee and twist step. Same move, is it? Uh, not footwork, not this way. Two. Do a little adaptation here. Put in, put out. Six. Watch. Put in, put back out. Breath. In it. See the cycle. Did it. Switch your muscle on this side. Nine times. Two. Three. Then it usually comes up and pushing down. Three. See this one? Well, this is the brush. This is really the brush knee. See? And the palm strike. Some schools do it as such. Bullpen to brush your knees. And here, some schools take it here. 
we're here. Russian interest. It's a classic Yarong style. Some of the other schools do a little bit. Good. Inhale. And down. Up. And down. Good. So, now, this is when our hands are 180 degrees, okay, in opposite phases, right? But they're both up and out, right? Up and out. Up and out. Right? Except older days. So why I bring that up is because if I have this wax on move and I have this hand doing the wax on move, don't worry so much about the breathing now. Just try to see these two at opposite end of the cycle. Right? Right? When this one's high, this one's low. Now, the position of this hand, sometimes it'll be here, sometimes it'll be here, sometimes it'll be here, sometimes it'll be here, sometimes it's here. This one, we're going to cut up, okay? it's going to come up so the edge of the hand is out. Okay? Some use the others to stick out, but it stays relaxed, okay? so we're really serving this part of the arm, the thumb side, okay? like it was a reverse chop of some sort, okay? which is what it is, but typically, this, where the edge of the sword, this is all part of the sword. Really, the move is all the arc, kind of like a clothesline type move. Okay? And that, so it could be here, okay? here, here, here. A lot of times this is shot right up under the jaw. You know? This way. Yeah. But, I mean, boom. You know, a little whack with the back of the hand. But, right, so we see this circle. So, here. It's called slantingly blind. It's a very similar move called parting the horse's mane. But when we're doing it as, a, as we were emulating a wild horse ruffling its mane, we want to, to whip it. A little bit more like that. Okay, it's a lot of variation. Okay. Brothers and sisters, the same move. First guard. Anyway, this is the rear guard. Okay, then in the front. Okay. As the hands are passing, just like they're ripping a piece of paper. This hand usually goes to the flank. Ideally, it should be here at the side, okay? It can go back a little more, okay? It's meant here to protect against this side of the body, okay, as that's out, okay? But at the same time, as a reciprocating type move, so this would be grabbing the wrist, maybe up under the arm, okay? Um, it could be catching something as it's going on, so that the two working together. Reciprocation is a great way to increase your force and power in the move, okay? Let's try the other side. In, breath from the navel to the hand. Feel that. Now, it's probably about 32 degrees out here. It actually snowed today. Okay, but, breath going to the hand. I can feel the capillaries opening up. And heat going out too. And feels very, very good. Looking at it from your direction. Yeah, through. See this come down and protect. This brushes. Usually about there, center line. Okay, you don't want to go too far over. And you certainly want not there. Okay, if my move, you always have a relationship as to where you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, okay? I should have probably got started a little bit earlier, 
Uh, the light's starting to diminish, but so we'll go to artificial light. Okay. Let me finish up the class. Okay. All right, cool. All right, uh, but three more. Slantingly flying is one of the first moves in the 24. Oddly enough, in the classic forms, okay, it comes at the end, comes at the third set. Usually, the Tai Chi, the original forms, are divided into three parts, okay? Man, or um, heaven, earth, and man. Okay? Or heaven, man, earth. Okay? That's a better way to put it. Um, uh, so that usually in the more advanced set, the, the third set, you have more sophisticated movements. Okay? Uh, so let's add some of our breathing into some of our uh, Qigong moves okay, today. Okay. Let's see. Um, one of such is, uh, we're go I'm going to do is, uh, let's start off with um, um, returning springtime. Okay. So if you recall, returning springtime, we're rounding the shoulders, we're rounding the hips, okay. feet about shoulder width apart, we're bending the knees, letting the hips rock forward, okay? Shoulders rock forward. Everything comes up, shoulders up, okay? Shoulders back, hips are back, okay? So I'm making a circle of the shoulders, circle of the hips, and kind of like one here at the knees, but I'm actually rocking, you can see it move, rocking up on the balls of the feet and then back again, okay? Put the breath in. Back and down. Two. Mm -hmm. Slower, the better. Let that breath permeate everything. It's so amazing that you have something as simple as breathing, which you've been doing since the time we took our first breath uh, could be misunderstood. Or understood that. Good. Part two, recall, I'm using my knees, okay? My knees drop my shoulders. Okay? Shoulders is just shaking. But while we do this, we do what we call relaxation chico. Okay? What's that mean? Well, start by relaxing your neck, ears and jaw. Relax your throat. Feel your chest, feel your shoulders. Let the uh, heavy drop back, chest, relax, belly, middle back, let it go, okay, lower back, belly, hips, let it go, thighs, hamstrings, let it go, knees, calves, spread your feet out, let your weight sink down, Your tempo can be faster or slower, depending. Breath, don't worry about it. Want to be a little warmer, shift a little more. Now what's happening is my body is starting to go aerobic. My respiration is increasing. But I want to concentrate on relaxing. Oh, I read a really interesting thing in the book though. And it says that on the exhale, 
if you hum. You increase the production of nitric oxide, okay, which has all kinds of pleasant effects on the body. And I always wanted to do uh, um, well, I did it. Talking doesn't do it. Now, when I learned the exercise, Mr. Bien, he said, do it for like a hundred counts. And when I walked him on top chia, he like did it for like ten minutes. And so, I don't know. And what I do know, I like doing it longer. That's one of the most pleasant things that um, experiences that I do. One of the more. So now, stop winding the shoulders, okay? So, right shoulder, I move to the right. Left shoulder comes up, I move to the left. So my shoulders are alternating. As the shoulder's rising, we're shifting in that direction, okay? As the shoulder's falling, we're moving away from that direction. So the shoulders are figurating, right? Shoulders are definitely going through their circles, continuous, smooth, even, round, as Mr. BM would say, with a smiley face. Good. Now the hips are circled. When I pull up on the right, it pulls all the way across my foot. Now watch my feet. My as I move, it'll turn, okay? Then I'll kind of put that foot down, okay? Shift myself to that side. As I go over, go up, it'll pull to this foot, okay? This is kind of relaxing, isn't it? Let the heel stretch. So when you 